Welcome to The Sewing Report, I'm Jennifer Moore, helping you discover your love of sewing crafts and DIY projects. And guys, we've got another viewer request episode. I'm going to be talking all about my pin collection, how I came to own this many pins, what I think of them, and we're gonna do demonstrations to show you, is there a difference? Are they all the same? Should you spend more money on pins? I don't know, but let's, let's chat about it. The first pins I ever bought when I started sewing were these very basic dritz, I think these are plastic head pins. These worked for, for quite a while, so I used these. At that time, I did sew over the pins. I know there was a debate, like, should you sew over the pins or not? These I definitely sewed over, and they certainly got some, like, divots in them and, like, some marks, so I probably wouldn't recommend that, and since then, I haven't really sewn over the pins. I removed them before I'm doing anything. So these are just your basic standard pins. They don't have a, they're not longer pins. They're somewhat comfortable to, I guess, hold and insert. They're not super difficult to use. I mean, they do what they say they do, they're pins. And these are pretty inexpensive. Then when I was at this quilting workshop, the instructor recommended we try these button head pins. I think these are also by Dritz, but these are heat resistant, which is cool. And I just really like the button heads on them. I think they're easy to see. And I do like that they kind of lay flat and they're easy to grip and hold. So I'm a fan. I mean, size wise, these are a little bit longer than the other Dritz pins. And I gotta say, I don't know how I feel about the round pins. I don't feel like these are easy to hold. So that is kind of a con for anything with a round he head. Like it just doesn't feel very natural to hold in my opinion. And that is kind of an important thing. I know we're getting very into the weeds here about literally pins. And if you think I'm a really boring person, that's totally okay because I definitely am. For some reason, I thought I needed even fancier pins, so I got these really shishi looking French ones by a company called Boeing. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but these are plastic flower heads and they are a bit longer. So if you kind of lay these side by side, you'll see here's the button head pin and here's the Dritz pin. These are definitely the shortest. For some reason, these just didn't jive with me. I mean, I'm sure they're fine. They do what they're at, what's advertised. And then I also got more of those same pins in a maxi mailbox. And she also included this really pretty Boeing wrist pin cushion. And I love the mint green tuft here. I did some project, I think it was a top that I was working with that was like poly crepe. So I really wanted to get some pins that didn't leave holes in the fabric. So then I picked up these silk and satin pins. They work really well and I, I actually like that they're shorter. Now these come in only red and white for whatever reason, but it works really well on not leaving visible holes in the fabric, especially on your finer fabric. And I'll kind of show you, yeah, like, when you take these out, you don't see anything. So this is great for your more delicate fabrics. Okay, so my latest pins, these I got from Inspire Quilting in Plant City and I was kind of just there and I was like, hey, let's see what they've got. And these kind of caught my eye. I really like this box. I know that's kind of silly to be into the packaging and these are magic pins. These are fairly short, but I gotta say, I kind of like that about them. They're really easy to hold and easy to use. And I really like the head on these because I just find they're really comfortable. These are also, I think, marketed as heat safe. So like if you put an iron over the magic pins or over the button head pins, they won't melt. Some of the other pins you use, if you try to, if you accidentally put your iron over them, they will melt. So just keep that in mind. You might ruin your pins and your iron. So don't do that. But I really like these magic pins so far. I've been using them quite a bit. I love that they have this easy to use container. And I don't know, I just enjoy using them. I love the color. I'm a really big sucker for anything like aqua or mint green. And these were kind of pricey. They were like $10 for 50, but you know, we'll see how long they last. Um, out of all of them though, fancy French pins, I feel like they're kind of flimsy. I'm not really sure why, but I kind of feel like they would be really easy to bend or like get ruined. So maybe that's why I don't use them all that much. I don't know. But look, you're the one using this pin, so you need to like them, and that's what's most important. But I just kind of wanted to show you all the different pins I own, what I like and don't like about them, and which ones I tend to use the most, which is certainly the buttonhead pins and the magic pins, but whenever I'm working with finer fabrics, I always go for these silk and satin pins 
and I do really like these were pretty inexpensive. So that is my pin collection. I know this has been an absolutely illuminating video for anyone who's over here and is like, what, what is this? I don't know. But I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the Sewing Report for everything sewing crafts and DIY projects. And if you like to binge watch here on YouTube, I'm gonna link another video for you to watch next. I'm Jenna for more for the Sewing Report. I'll see you guys again in the next episode.